Hey now. Well, it's that day. It's uh, September 11th, 2019. And um, I'm just going to check in and um, <clears throat> wish everyone a beautiful life. Rather than say anything political on this day, I think I'll just say have a beautiful life. The last thing we need to talk about right now is politics. So I've listened to this, and this is very, very, very good. Rituals by Orchestra Entropy. It's one of the latest releases on the Discus music label. And this is a... a <clears throat> I would say the quickest reference for this is if you like Henry Cow, or if you do indeed like group improvisation and you're um, a deep listener, this is for you. Uh, this is really good and it's happening on a lot of different levels. There's lots of things happening on here besides the horns. And um, the ensemble playing is really quite good. It's the kind of music that you have to take your time with and um, be patient with. It's like, um, really in order to get this, it's like, well, you have to pay attention and be interested in what's happening in order to get it. Orchestra Entropy, Discus Music, um, putting out some great stuff. Um, that's what I can say about this. I didn't play it this morning to touch base. I'm going from the, la the memory of the last listen, which was, yeah, this is a hearty meal, is what I was thinking. And these guys are um, working really well together. Orchestra Entropy, that's why I, I, I just um, don't have a lot of words to put together about it, but I can encourage and recommend it honestly. I can rank up, recommend it honest, honestly. Um, <clears throat> you really just woke up and took a peek online to see what was going on, and um, the... Uh, couple comments to respond to. Someone asked me, do I like Depeche Mode? Well, if you go back and watch some of my videos, frankly, my, my answer is always going to be, when people ask me, do you, well, what do you think about a rather established artist? I can honestly say, well, if you watch some old videos, you'll probably see where I've talked about them. Um, I respect all good art. I like Depeche Mode. I do. I don't like all good artists. You know, some people who are really good that people like, I don't want to hear them. Van Morrison is one example. I respect Van Morrison, but I, I really don't care to listen to him. I was hanging out at a record shop yesterday with Joe Benson, and he was asking me, what do you, what do you think of Willie Mitchell, you know, the uh, high producer? And I respect Willie Mitchell, but I don't, that's not the kind of groove that I'm in at home. It's not the sort of space that I want to be living in. That's very, you know. Someone else asked me, um, what do I think of Ariel Pink? I haven't bought his records, but I like Ariel Pink. I like what he's about. I met Ariel about eight, nine years ago. And it's funny, when I met him, he said, you look familiar. And I said to him, well, we've never met, but I've worked with a friend, someone you know. We have a, a common a friend in common. Dino Felipe, who I also have never met, but we corresponded um, long distance and made a, a seven-inch single for Public Eyesore Records. And uh, we got to be pretty friendly, you know, long distance, so he probably saw some correspondence between myself and Dino. So I dug um, meeting and hanging out with Ariel. His music is eclectic. It reminds me quite a bit of the way our Stevie Moore works. 
I just haven't bought any of his records because, um, uh, because I haven't, you know, if someone were to send me some Ariel Pink, I'd love that, you know, just haven't bought any. Here's something I pulled to, to listen to and only got a certain ways and it sounded rather dated, but I would still keep, I would still keep this in my collection. <clears throat> Steve Smith, the drummer. Steve Smith, Vital Information, Orion. Steve Smith, who you know mainly from his um, hit-making years with the band Journey. He's a very good drummer, very skilled. And that's what this album is about. It's about showing off that these guys can play. The writing is okay, but the approach is a little bit dated. I like fusion, and I like... <clears throat> busy playing when it's done well. That album is just a slight bit on the stale side. When I went to the store yesterday and said, um, you know, I can, uh, you know, just looking to see if there's anything that pops out to me. Um, in the uh, used section for $5 was this album, which caught my, my eye because I didn't know what it was. So I picked it up, and it's a it's a project called Ether, Ethernor. Uh, Deep Ocean in... It's a funny title. In Deep Ocean Sunk the Lamp of Light. Now, the reason why I went ahead and took a chance on this, because I didn't know what it was... <clears throat> So I, you know, was used, so I was able to look at on the inside, and one of the people credited on this is Stephen O'Malley. Um, from Sun. So I thought to myself, you know, I want to, you know, spend a couple of bucks uh, to support the, uh, the shop, because they hardly get any, any uh, traffic in there. And this is one of the things that I've always loved when I could afford to record crate, dig, is to find things that look interesting and take a chance. And I'm glad that I bought this. This is, um, it's not, it's not like sun, but it's a sound project and it starts off really quiet and it just builds into this, the sound space. Um, I like it. I don't know how many times I would necessarily listen to this, but this is exactly the sort of thing where the listening, the it's, a, it's an adventure to listen to. There's no vocals. It doesn't really... I only listen to this once, and after one listen, I can't say it defined anything for me. I like what I experienced while it was happening. Aethanor. I think it's spelled A-E-T-H-E-N-O-R. I, I had, didn't know anything about this. So, a new edition um, from um, a, a little dig yesterday. Something else I'll show, which I do for fun, is um, I do make a lot of music um, for uh, no particular reason, just to make it, and then I archive it. Um, really, I'm uh, not concerned about trying to put out anything new right now, but I have fun making um, copies of the stuff for myself, for my own entertainment. And the last two uh, CD burns that I m made were these. Um, if you Online, you've seen this what, picture here. It's a, um, a cartoon of me by artist Solomon Ernst, and I just made a little cover for uh, some of the things I've messed with so far in 2019. You know, just one of a kind, not for sale. And this one too, some loops, loops that I had put together. Getting ready for a show I'm doing next week in Lincoln uh, for an avant-garde um, uh, showcase. So I just made myself a, a single copy 
of what I, some of the loops that came out pretty good. That's just fun stuff to do. I thought I'd show those to you. Not for sale. There's only one copy each. I have quite a bit of these. It's fun, you know, uh, as a record collector and nerdy guy. It's neat to um, just, oh, hell, I'll make a record, you know, and there's only one copy. <laughs> the one that I made. It's kind of fun. I've peeked in on a couple of uh, videos recently by people I can't even say their names because I've never watched them before. You know, the, the vinyl community idea has come a long way since I first discovered it. And it's just great that so many different kinds of people just own it and just do what they want. Bravo to all of you, all record collectors and music lovers um, and music nerds worldwide. Much love to all of you. So, um, I'll do a poll, okay? And I am probably missing some places where I haven't pulled, but I'm just going to go right there. Okay. Uh, what is it? What is this? What did I pull? Ipikatka Band. From Finland. Another band from Finland. Have I shown? Yeah, Wigwam is another band from Finland. <clears throat> this is jazzy. Uh, Fusiony jazzy. This is really, really good, actually. And um, none of the other names on here besides Kotka would be anyone. Well, if you're uh, deep into jazz internationally, you might know some of these other names. But, um, oh, I've had this for a long time. This came out, I think, in the 70s. 1985, excuse me, 1985. I probably bought it, you know, about that time. Ipikatka. Recommended, okay. On Leo Records. Pretty cool. Okay. So we were there. We'll go to the next section. There. Twelve inch single by Japan, the band Japan, David Sylvian, Richard Barbieri, Steve Jansen, Mick Karn. This is a 12 inch uh, promo copy of Visions of China and Canton, US pressing of it. Love the band. Ten Drum is a classic album. If you don't know the band's album, Ten Drum, that is just an amazing, unique album. No one had made anything that sounded like it at the time. No one. I highly rate that album. <sighs> oh. What do we have? What do we have? Peter Michael Hamill. He was in the band Between. Two of these stuck together. Uh, it's ambient spiritual music. Let it play. Here's another one of his. Transition. I don't play these often. It's like, you know, it's like jazz or like any music. You know, I need to be in the mood. But um, he is really quite good. I think he's primarily a keyboardist. Peter Michael Hamill. This is good stuff. Yeah, you know, I'm not going to pull over here and all of a sudden you're going to see me pull out like an Almond Brothers or just something real regular. No offense to the Almond Brothers, but that's, you know, <laughs> this is a unique collection. It really is. So let me try one more down here. Okay. I kind of, you know, I have an idea of, well, of course, because it's my collection, but still, when I do it like this, it's like, I'm not sure. This is cool. The Merchants of Dream, Strange Night Voids. This is not psychedelic, although people try to, um, like on Discogs, um, list it as psychedelic. You know, it's not. I would say this is probably a studio creation. And it's um, trying to be a concept album. It's it's pop 
but kind of like, oh, I don't know, it's like it's trying to be like a Jimmy Weber, Jimmy Weber, like a big sound, you know, like, it's trying to be a big idea. I'm going to play this when I get done here. It's been a while. Um, Merchant of Dream. Check this album out, actually. Strange Night Voyage. This goes back again to the late 60s, early 70s. Okay, I'm going to stop there for now. I'm going to stop there for now. Um, and 9-11. Um, what a loaded date.